on vision. What better thing do we have than vision as we look at our accomplishments from 2019, but also look forward to 2020 with a keen eye for the future? First, I'm gonna highlight some of the things that we accomplished in 2019. Well, from the picture you can see, we welcome two new city commissioners. We thanked Commissioner Scott Drake and Brian Smith for their leadership and their commitment and the dedication that they have had, as well as the friendships that we have formed with those former commissioners. And um, they're a special group, and we have a special group coming in as well. So that's certainly one of the things that happened in 2019. We also formed or appointed a 25 member affordable housing task force with different backgrounds and expertise, but all interested in helping us tackle this difficult issue. A total of 15 different staff members worked with the task force and seven subcommittees or working groups were formed to work on the different parts of the charge given by the city commission. And we ask a lot of them. And this is the logo for the Affordable Housing Task Force. Here are some of the things that that charge included. Determine a definition of affordable as it relates to housing. Complete a housing study what do we have now in the city of Decatur? Evaluate our current policies, programs, and initiatives. Develop a set of recommendations and present those findings and recommendations to the city commission. And after submitting those, complete a report that will come to the city commission very soon. And after we receive this report, our work will start. I have to say that we are excited about that work. And then next, next year, there's going to be some progress to report. As I stated in my opening remarks at the strategic plan kickoff, in some ways we become victims of our own success. We're not alone in the metro region or in the entire country with challenges in housing to meet the needs of middle income and workforce earners. But we, the city of Decatur, is committed to making meaningful progress. Many thanks to this dedicated group of volunteers for helping us get started. So give them a round of applause. We also got to celebrate our rock star fire department. Our rock star fire department all female leadership team. This group has been nationally recognized and we all feel such a keen sense of pride for our city and for their accomplishments. If you have not seen the clips from the Kelly Clarkson show or from NBC's nightly news with Lester Holt, you need to see those. And kudos to Fire Chief Tony Washington, Deputy Fire Chief Vera Morrison, and Assistant Fire Chief, who I see in the back of the room. Um, Fire Chief and Fire Marshal Nanetta Violante. So, and are the others? Yes. Are is Chief? Oh, and there's uh, Deputy, or excuse me, Assistant Fire Chief Vera Morrison. Thank you. Oh, they're all here. Thank you. Thank you. What an inspiration these women provide as role models for girls and young women. We also celebrated the arts this year with several new murals through our partnership with the Decatur Arts Alliance and Living Walls. Is Angie Macon? Thank you. Here's 
one of my favorites in the Old Depot District, also known as the Odd District. The artist is Jamie Cabrone, a talented young Agnes Scott graduate. And the piece is entitled, Our Immigrant Mothers. And if you have not been to Legacy Park recently, you may not have seen this beautiful new addition, the newly installed sculpture in honor of former city manager, Peggy Maris. It is entitled, Start Where You Are, and the sculptor is Karina Sephora Mensoff. When you see this sculpture, be sure to read the inscription that accompanies the piece. It's a beautiful poem that the sculptor wrote specifically for this piece and for the dedication. I think it's also important to recognize that this year we passed a non-discrimination ordinance. As I said at the time, that is at the time, Decatur is committed to the values of equity, inclusion, and diversity, and the adoption of this ordinance is a tangible way to demonstrate that commitment. I want to thank our Better Together Advisory Board for working with us on developing this ordinance. It's an important one, so thank you. We also updated the community master plan for Legacy, Legacy Park with more specificity for housing types and numbers. This is the North Village. You can see a mixture of cottages, duplexes, and renovating existing buildings. You can also see the chapel in this picture. And you may remember that the chapel was carved out when we purchased the property from the United Methodist Children's Home. It was carved out and, and was retained by the United Methodist Children Home, Children's Home, but it was not really used as they originally thought it would be used. And now this beautiful historic chap uh, chapel was offered back to the city and the transaction for the city receiving this beautiful chapel has recently been completed. And when you go to see the sculpture, you can also go see this historic chapel that was built in 1806. So we look forward to ways that we can incorporate the chapel and its use into our community master plan. It is truly a historic gem on that property. If we move to the south, the South Village shows a mixture of walk-up flats, rehabilitated buildings, multiplex units, and more. This area is currently being used as temporary housing as the Decatur Housing Authority renovates some of its buildings. This allows for as little disruption as possible for the families. And we're pleased to be able to have this property and the duplexes and other structures available for their use um, as we transition that piece of property and as they transition and renovate some of their buildings. Both of these documents are part of an addendum to the community master plan for Legacy Park and can be found online, as well as a lot of other information about our community master plan for Legacy Park. I hope you've noticed the new banners in downtown Decatur. The Downtown Development Authority has a new logo and a monthly newsletter that highlights Decatur businesses. I believe the last one recently highlighted former school board member Annie Kaola and her, and her business in downtown Decatur. As Downtown Development Authority Chair Chris, Chris Sharon says, We've kept Decatur a secret for too long. We're ready to introduce our city as a hub for forward thinking companies seeking to elevate their employee experience. We're all about experience in the city of Decatur. 
The city is home to over 1.8 million square feet of office space and boasts a low and healthy vacancy of 6% with easy access to all modes of transportation. And although we had some businesses close in 2019, we had 19 new restaurants and retail businesses and one new hotel opened in 2019. So that's a healthy sign. And I wanted to just list these for all of you and encourage you, if you haven't been there, to visit some of our new businesses. Lennox Cupcakes, Haven, yeah, right, delicious, right? <laughs> Haven Heige House, Olive Branch Wellness Boutique, Wild Crab, Karis Books, Antlers and Wings, Faux King, Spot for Dogs, Frogs to Dogs, Folk Art Cafe, Mr. Everything Woo! Cafe, <laughs> a fan, Clarity Fitness, Float Atlanta, <laughs> The Deer and the Dove, B-Side, Coastal Green and Trove Home. So let's give our new business a <laughs> And well, in 2019, we saw the scooters come, and in 2020, we saw them go. <laughs> so um, we had we have a remarkable fellow in the city manager's office, Ash Kumar. Uh, And we have to thank her for her diligent work to craft an ordinance that served us well and that worked with Lyme scooters. But their decision to pull out of the Atlanta market obviously means that they will leave us as well. But we'll see what the new micro mobility opportunities come our way in the future. And as we begin to look at 2020 and our vision and what's happening next, I have to celebrate the fact that just this last weekend, the city of Decatur was honored by Georgia Trends Magazine to receive the Georgia Municipal Association's inaugural Visionary City Award. Nine cities in the entire state were honored, three in different categories according to population. The cities were honored for fostering healthy working relationships and for making their communities places where people truly love to live and work. Our civic engagement, our Better Together Action Plan, our civic dinners, our Decatur dinners, all contributed to our strong application. And you can see us receiving the award. And I have to say, Commissioner Kelly Walsh was out of town on a, on a family trip and uh, was not able to, uh, to be with us. But um, we really appreciate um, Georgia Trends and Georgia Municipal Association for recognizing our efforts. And I think all of us in this room can certainly agree that we're a visionary city. And since this is year 2020, I would be remiss if I didn't say, the census is coming. So we have a complete count committee. Um, 10 years ago, we had about an 84% response rate. The goal this year is 90%. It may be a stretch, but I think we can get there. I'm looking at our city clerk, Meredith Rourke, who is um, the spearhead of our efforts. And I want all of us to participate and encourage your neighbors, um, friends, people you see on the street, the schools, the housing authority, um, to remember that I count, you count, we all count, we need to be a part of the census count. It is an important 
um, opportunity for us that only comes around every 10 years. So April 1st is Census Day. You'll be hearing a lot more from our Census Complete Count Committee, and I encourage all of us to get involved in our census efforts. Also in 2020, we actually celebrate the 50th anniversary of Earth Day in April. Many of you, as I look out, may not have been born when the first <laughs> Earth Day came around. I was. So, um, but Decatur is going to be celebrating Earth Day in style. There will be a parade, entertainment, speakers, and more. And the chair of our Environmental Sustainability Board, Mr. Michael Black, is here this evening, and he is heading up that effort. So, I encourage you to come out and, and celebrate on April the 18th, on Saturday the 18th. It will be fun, it will be informative, and I think it will all, it will remind us of what we need to do, not only in celebrating Earth Day, but what we need to do as we move forward in taking care of this Earth. I thought about this um, in preparing for this evening, and as we approach the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, I hope we not only celebrate but then we also contemplate what we can do as the city, as individuals, as homeowners, as businesses, places of worship, schools, and institutions to reduce our environmental impacts. It's important. We're working with Agnes Scott College and other partners on the development of a climate resiliency plan. We have a goal of planting a thousand new trees by our bicentennial anniversary in 2023. We're building a network of transportation connectors to maximize the use of transit and improve other opportunities for modes of different modes of transportation. We have some of the first high performance building codes in the state but we know that other opportunities exist for all of us. And I look forward to seeing what comes out of the strategic plan to move us closer to achieving a goal of a healthier planet and that all of us are doing our part in that. It can't just be the city by itself. It has to be all of the folks that I've mentioned before, each of us individually, and it's a part of our, our various communities. I hope you recognize this from our strategic planning efforts. Peter Kagiyama, in his book, Love Your City, introduces the concept of co-creators, citizens who make their communities better, more interesting, and more lovable. All of you in the audience, as well as the more than 600 people who came out last week for the strategic plan kickoff, can be co-creators for the next chapter indicator. I want you to help us create a co cohesive vision. In our strategic plan, we're going to be making a roadmap for the future. It's important. Help us solve the puzzle and put the pieces together that just fit for the city of Decatur. By the way, if you haven't signed up yet, you still have that opportunity for a few more days. Sign up online and we can get you on a round table. This is a really important process for the city of Decatur. And as um, Lewis mentioned, that they are looking for input on their facilities planning. We are looking for input on who do we want to be, what do we want to be in the year 2030. I close with a statement from resident Ed Lee, who is, a who is the senior director of the Barclay Forum for Debate 
Deliberation and Dialogue at Emory University and is a member of our Better Together Board. And I was uh, given permission to share this with you. In his letter of support for our award as a visionary city, he so eloquently stated, when many political actors have either opted to hide behind the illusion of cohesion or to build ideological or physical barriers to divide us, the city of Decatur continues to develop opportunities for creative conversations that will make our disagreements generative and our differences a wellspring of social innovation. We understand that communities that disagree, listen, and empathize together will intellectually, culturally, and economically grow together. That's my hope for all of us as we move forward through our strategic plan and as we move forward together as a city. Remember, we're a visionary city. Thank you very much for being here.